talk about at parties. You want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. Keep this frequency clear. And now it's conspiracy, see? They've made that something that, that, is, that is, should, should not be even entertained for a minute, that powerful people might get together and have a plan. Doesn't happen. You're a kook. You're a conspiracy buff. You're watching The Truth is Viral, the only news program on the internet trusted to deliver the truth since 2008. And now, here's your host, Mr. Bobby Powell. Welcome back to The Truth is Viral. I'm your host, Bob Powell, and today we've got a special guest with us. His name is Pastor Carl Gallops. Carl is the founder of the P.P. Simmons YouTube ministry and uh, carlgallops.com, the author of an award-winning book, number one on the Amazon bestseller list. It's called... Uh, <laughs> I got it. It's called the Magic Man in the it's Sky. Effectively, effectively defending, defending the Christian, Christian faith. faith. Yeah, uh, I I knew the subtitle of it, but the 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 first part of it just absolutely uh, escaped my mind. Sorry about that, Carl. Okay. Oh, that's quite alright. Okay. Uh, the last time that that Carl was was on the show, he was interviewing Detective uh, Mike Zulo of the our, our Sheriff Arpaio's Cold Case Posse out in Maricopa County, Arizona. And uh, for the last couple of years, uh, Sheriff Arpaio and, and Detective Zulo have been looking into Barack Obama's birth certificate. And you know, recently they've come up with some from some pretty stunning uh, revelations. You know, the investigation is moving forward, and uh, some VIPs are, are are coming on board. And it looks like we're finally going to get some traction on this uh, on this issue. But uh, Carl, you know, you were talking uh, to me earlier, and I saw yesterday on on your uh, uh, PP Simmons blog spot that uh, you've been running into a little bit of trouble. Uh, you got a, a couple of these uh, high level personalities that have promised to give you support, and uh, then when it comes down to it, uh, they real they really didn't. Now the f the first guy that. Uh, you know, offered you, you some help and then some encouragement was uh, Colonel Allen West, uh, former representative down in Florida. But uh, Colonel West decided to uh, pull out of this. Carl, can you talk about that for just a second? Yeah, I can. And, and, and thank you, Bobby, for having me on the show. And let me just say, but before I answer that question directly, I want to give your audience hope because I don't want them thinking that, oh, my gosh, it's all falling apart. Oh, no. This case is going forward strong. The, the number of VIPs, very important people, outstanding people with finances and money, uh, excuse me, uh, finances and power and authority to move this to a federal investigation. Those numbers are growing literally every week. Groups of VIPs are now joining the cause. Uh, several individuals of high standing are getting involved and in making meeting arrangements with Arpaio and Zulo. Uh, the plans are being laid to out this entire thing at a national level uh, to move it forward to a prosecution level. So I just want to say that before I go any further, that, that this is moving forward full steam ahead, and there's much promise. And when I ask you, audience, to, uh, uh, to pray and uh, to be patient. Now, yes, Colonel Allen West, Mike Zulo, and I attended uh, CPAC together for the purpose of making uh, arrangements and meetings with uh, very important people of standing people who can get something done. And we did have some meetings, uh, hours and hours of meetings with very important people. It has proven to be extremely fruitful in that these other groups and, and VIPs that have come on board since then are directly or at least indirectly related to what we did at CPAC. However, while we were there, uh, one evening we were having a dinner in, in a CPAC restaurant and Colonel Alan West came right by our table. Um, I, I stood up and we spoke with him uh, and uh, the, a gentleman by the name of Gary Laconis was with us. We stood up and asked Colonel West, I told him who we were, asked if we could meet with him, and uh, told him what we wanted to meet with him about. And he said, yes, 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 I'll meet with you. I'm very interested in that. So bottom line, make a long story short, a couple of days later at CPAC, uh, Lieutenant Zulo finally had a meeting, but we had to kind of hunt West down. It was as though he now was trying to kind of uh, dodge us when he finally got a hold of him and I'm going to paraphrase this because um, I was not personally at this meeting although I did talk to Wes several times myself about this but Zulo met with him and said look here's what we have here's the criminal case here is who has signed off on it here's the evidence we have 
This is not a birther issue. This is a criminal fabrication, forgery of a document issue. Uh, it needs to move to a federal level of investigation and prosecution. And here it is, and we're going forward with it. Colonel West looked at it, acknowledged it, acknowledged the gravity of it, acknowledged the seriousness of it, and then he said, Bobby, and again, I'm going to paraphrase, but this paraphrase is pretty close to his exact words. His exact words are recorded in an article we did. But what he said was to Zulo, to Lieutenant Zulo, he said, I am not going to get involved in this because I have political aspirations. I'm going to be running, and I may be running for office very soon, and I don't want to be involved in this. It might hurt my opportunity uh, for election. Uh, Lieutenant Zulo was flabbergasted. I mean, I don't remember exactly what Zulo said, but it was something along the lines of, you know, truly, you're you're going to you're going to uh, sacrifice the Constitution and and our national security over your opportunity to run for a little political office. And and he basically said, Colonel West said something <laughs> along the lines of, well, I I can't uh, afford to be seen as a. Uh, 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 a tinfoil hat person or something like that. It, it, you know, and, and Zulo said, wait a minute, what, what are you talking about? I'm, I'm a law enforcement officer. Arpaio's a sheriff. This is a criminal investigation, 15 months. We have criminal uh, digital document experts that have signed off on this. Uh, one uh, company uh, is, is certified to testify before the Supreme Court and every federal court in the land. This is not some tinfoil hat thing. This is not some Mickey Mouse birther operation. This is a criminal prosecution of a forged document emanating from the White House. And he said, well, I'm just not going to get involved in this. I have political aspirations. So, you know, Bobby, it's that kind of attitude that is corrupting and destroying Washington at its core. We've got people who literally, I mean, Colonel West, a colonel in the military, an American hero, we thought, uh, you know, he's more concerned about whether or not he can run for a little two or three or four year political office than whether or not we have a foreign usurper as commander in chief, perhaps. Uh, in, in, in little Port St. Lucie, Florida. Uh, you know, that's where I got, had my first job in, uh, in, uh, in, in the media. I was editing a, a newspaper down there. Little Port St. Lucie, Florida, just a tiny little speck. And uh, I, I, I just have to look at this and, and I have to say, Colonel West, is a political coward. If if it, if his political career is the only thing that is stopping him from joining this effort to to save our country, then he is well, a coward. Yeah, that would be my assessment, and those would be the words I would use. And based upon everything I know, my conversations with West at CPAC and Zulo's related conversation with West at CPAC to me, that's my assessment as well. I mean, a political coward, and uh, I, 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 I'm just, I, I was overwhelmed. I was deeply disappointed because I had such high regard for Colonel West, such high respect. I had spoken of him so highly on my, my own radio program and, and on the Internet and with people, and, and I, I tell you, I, I wouldn't give him the time of day now. I, I wouldn't vote for him for, for a dog catcher. I wouldn't. Well, brother, I, I know how you feel. Sometimes uh, people just stab you in the back, but you can't let that phase you. You just got to pick up and move on. And well, you know, I would have I would have had more respect for him in the very beginning when we met him that night in the restaurant. If we told him who we were and what we were doing and what we wanted, if he'd have just said, you know, I I really would r rather not talk about that while I'm here. I'm at CPAC. Uh, uh, let me get with y'all later. Something like that. But to say, oh yeah, 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 I'll meet and then hear all the information and then say to us, actually say to us. I'm not going to get involved in that because it might hurt my political aspirations. I, it just overwhelmed me. Okay. Uh, Carl, you've got uh, another person, uh, uh, a very important person, that has yeah. promised you, uh, and, and this is somebody that is an active congressman, somebody that's actually in office, that has, yeah. has, has promised to come on board with this, but uh, you're getting some, uh, some resistance there, too. Can you talk about that for just a second? Yeah, well, it's more than resistance. You know, if you just got some resistance, again, I, I wouldn't mind, Bobby. I'm not out to strong arm anybody. I, I, I'm not out to, I don't walk up to congressmen and slap them in the face and demand that they believe what I believe or, or join my cause. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not uh, crazy. My mother had me tested. Um, 
<laughs> but but no, but the reason that we're getting ready to out this right now unnamed congressman is because uh, I did have a meeting with him, Zulo and I, Lieutenant Zulo and I sat down with this congressman on Capitol Hill uh, in in the uh, in the uh, uh, Capitol building uh, in a conference room right outside of the House uh, House chambers with this congressman and his chief of staff. We made an appointment and told him who we were, what we were there for, could we meet with him. He made the appointment. We sat down. He asked amazing questions. I was I was very thrilled. I mean, he seemed to be engaged. He seemed to be interested. He asked questions. Uh, uh, Zulo answered them beautifully. Um, uh, then at the bottom line, let me get to the bottom line point. At the end of that meeting, lengthy meeting, 30, 45 minute meeting with the congressman and his chief of staff, after Zulo presented, you know, the kind of evidence he had and where we were going with it, the congressman said, well, could you get this hard copy evidence to me so I can see it, taste it, touch it, feel it, handle it, you know? And, and Zulu said, of course I can. He said, I'll go home, get it, fly back. I'll go to Arizona and get it and come back to Washington. And, and the congressman said, well, that won't be necessary. He said, look, I'm going to be in my home state here in the next week or two. Why don't we just set up a meeting? And he looked at me, he says, uh, Carl, can you be there? And I said, sure, I can be there too. And so Zulu and I agreed. He told his chief of staff, said, make this happen. So the congressman gets up and walks off. While he's walking off, I went with him to the door, and uh, I shook his hand, and I thanked him, and I said, now look, and I called him by name. I said, please tell me you're not blowing smoke in my ear. I said, please tell me that you're going to meet with us. Just at least meet and look at this with your own eyes. Feel it with your own hands. And he said, Carl, we're good to go. Carl, we're good to go. So twice he, he just promised me that he would do this. Well, uh, not only that, but he also asked Mike Zulo if he could have it examined by his own examiners. This congressman sits on a very powerful committee. And so uh, Mike Zulo said, of course you can. And he says, we, you know, we'll have to follow uh, the evidence chain of custody, but we'll make that happen. So we had all of these promises of cooperation and meetings and, you know, and could you be there? And could you travel to my home state, et cetera, et cetera. So we got home from CPAC. Um, I started getting on the uh, email and telephone line with his booking secretary um, and uh, and his chief of staff. And I've got a whole email chain of, of you know, look, we, we, we want to make these arrangements. When can the arrangements be made? Uh, uh, Lieutenant Zulo and I want to come. We're bringing the hard copy evidence. Uh, we will meet the congressman in his home state, et cetera, et cetera. And in the meantime, we did all that. We made all the arrangements. Uh, Zulo made, I mean, he bought plane tickets, he bought. He rented a car, he made hotel reservations. I made all my travel arrangements. Everything's ready. I wrote them back. I said, we're good to go. They reconfirmed it in email. Congressman is looking forward to meeting with you and Lieutenant Zulo, et cetera, et cetera. And then the next day, Bobby, I got a phone call from the chief of staff that blew me away. And this is why we're getting ready to out this congressman and the chief of staff and his booking secretary. The chief of staff calls me up and says, Carl, um, the meeting is not going to happen. And I said, well, why? And he said, well, Congressman doesn't remember ever making such a promise. I said, what? He said, Congressman doesn't remember ever promising you guys that we would meet. He doesn't remember ever making arrangements to meet you guys. I said, what, what are you, this is a joke, right? I said, what are you talking about? Oh, no, no, this is not a joke. We, we don't, we don't. Interesting things afoot. No doubt about that. Carl's going to call right back and we will continue this interview. This is what happens when uh, the FBI and everybody else is constantly listening to your conversations. Their software interferes with your uh, software. My computer just shut down. Brand new computer. It had plenty of uh, juice. It was plugged in. There was absolutely no reason for it to just shut down for no reason at all. And there's my friend Carl Guys. And we're back on the air with my friend Carl Gallops. How you doing, brother? I'm doing well, Bobby. Had a little technical glitch there. It happens. You know, it seems that with this... Uh, uh, Obama investigation in particular, even with this brand new computer, I've had more problems editing and uh, and conducting well, interviews and, and whatnot than with any other story I've ever done. It seems like well, something's it, trying to stop us. Yeah, you know something, Bobby, I, I've got a little anecdotal um, story to tell you about that. 
first of all, I will just say, yes, I think this is a deeply spiritual issue. And so, you know, as, as the Word of God tells us, uh, oftentimes our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against powers of darkness and wickedness in high places in the heavenly realms. But, you know, the same, I've had the same um, uh, problems. I mean, I've been live on radio, on a 25,000-watt radio station broadcasting to four states, talking about this issue, maybe having Zulo or or some of these uh, big-name people on the air with me, and lightning will strike the tower mm-hmm. during the middle of the show. I mean, just, just odd stuff. And, and, and <laughs> I've had that happen several times over the couple of years that I've been dealing with this. It's, it's quite amazing. Okay, so uh, let's just get right back to it then, shall we? You were talking uh, yeah. about an email chain that you had yeah. between uh, yourself and this congressman and his chief of staff. Can you get right back yeah. into that? Yeah, and so I'll just pick up where I left off. And so he was telling me, well, we just don't remember, you know, setting that up. We don't remember. And I said, well, I don't care what you remember. I've got the email chain. And he never would address that directly. He never would say, oh, yeah, I forgot, or, oh, yeah, I know you have it, or, or uh, you know, please don't uh, release that or anything. He just acted as though he wasn't hearing me say that. I'm telling you, Bobby, it was surreal. I, I, I didn't even feel like I was speaking with a human being. <laughs> I mean, because, because he was trying to convince me that I was crazy. And I mean, here I am, I sit on Capitol Hill in the White House, or not in the White House, in the Capitol building with a congressman and his chief of staff and Lieutenant Zulo in a 45-minute meeting. We make all these arrangements. I come home, I make phone calls, I have an email chain. Everything is set up perfectly just as he said then i get a phone call not to say look we've changed our mind i could handle that bobby or look uh, we've looked into this further and there's really nothing to it we're not going to deal with it i could have handled that but rather the phone call made to me was you're crazy uh we we never talked to you i mean that that's just that just boggles my mind (laughs) it boggles my mind so that's why we're outing this fellow. I haven't done it yet. Um, I'm still looking into a couple of other things. I want to make sure that um, uh, that there's no danger to this fellow uh, in case maybe he was threatened or something. And that's an outside possibility, but it's a possibility, and I want to be as responsible as possible. Uh, but uh, here pretty soon, uh, if we don't hear anything from their office, uh, we're going to go ahead and out them. I'm going to out him, his chief of staff, and his booking secretary by name. Because they're the people that were in contact with me, and they're the people that are saying that I'm crazy. Right. Uh, you know, if this was something like Colonel West, where it's just a, a matter of political cowardice, uh, you know, go for it. But, you know, you were telling me before uh, that, you know, in the, in the off chance that this person has been threatened, and Obama's got quite a dead pool of, of bodies attached to his, to his name. You can't find any of his boyfriends. They've all uh, committed suicide or, or, or something to that effect. Do you, do you think that uh, if, if you had to just issue a, a personal opinion, if you had to choose between political cowardice or uh, this person having been threatened in some way, which do you think that that would be leading? Well, if I had to choose and put money on it right now, I would say political cowardice. Um, but I'm erring on the side of caution because I am a um, cautious person and uh, a thoughtful person. I, I think things through. I just, I don't go off half cock. Uh, but if I had to, you know, if somebody forced me, put a gun to my head and forced me to put money down right now, I would say probably political cowardice. Um, but I just, you know, I want to do a little more examining, a little more talking, a little more uh, a time, a water to pass under the bridge, just to make sure that I can uh, feel comfortable knowing that this was political cowardice, and if that's exactly what it was, uh, then then we will out them, just like we did Colonel West. All right. Well, uh, if if it is political cowardice, I wouldn't want to be in his shoes. Uh, Carl Gallup's the uh, voice behind P.P. Simmons Ministry on YouTube. You can check his, check out his book, The Magic Man in the Sky, Effectively Defending the Christian Faith at carlgallops.com or at wndbooks.com. Thank you, my friend, for coming on The Truth is Viral. I really appreciate it, and good luck with this investigation. 
Thank you, Bobby. God bless you, and I always enjoy being on your program. Thank you for the opportunity. It was my pleasure, Carl. You have yourself a really good day, sir. Thank you, Bob. Thank you for watching The Truth is Viral with your host, Bobby Powell. Make sure to follow The Apocalypse on Twitter at The Truth is Viral. Like The Truth is Viral on Facebook, and if you can, please remember to donate to the cause via PayPal at www.bobpowell.blogspot.com. Smack Runner, your game is through. Smack Runner, I'm talking to you.